to the organizers from the Seafood Processing Laboratory of the Institute of Fish Processing Technology, the students, faculty, staff of the UP Visayas College of Fisheries and Ocean Sciences, and all the distinguished guests from government, private sector, business and enterprise, civil society organizations, people's organizations, all our virtual participants joining us today for this monthly webinar series on the current trends on post-harvest fisheries and food science. Good morning. It is my distinct honor to deliver the keynote for this webinar. This is a topic very close to my heart, not just as an environmental and climate advocate, but as a daughter of Antique as a daughter of Panay, sharing a common home with you in the island of Panay that is so greatly blessed with marine resources. Majority of our Kasimanwa rely on the sea for their livelihood and fishing and aquaculture production continue to be the main source of income. As a nation of many islands, our economy and our culture have depended on fisheries for decades, if not centuries. And yet, we know that small-scale fishers are still among the poorest, the most marginalized and even vulnerable people. We also know that the fisheries sector with its related industries in agriculture is under threat because of the climate emergency hitting the poorest first and the hardest. And as our planet warms, sea levels are rising at the rate fastest in the last 3,000 years, according to the UN's climate scientists, oceans are growing warmer, more acidic, threatening corals and marine life, and by extension, impacting livelihood, food security, and our nation's development. And on top of all these, we are grappling with this pandemic, COVID-19, which continues to disrupt every aspect of our life, whether personal, social, academic, business, economic. And one of the drivers of the climate emergency is single-use plastic use, especially single-use, which the pandemic has worsened because of the spike in online shopping, in deliveries, and the use of items like masks, gloves, sanitizers, alcohol, you all know how big of a problem plastic is in terms of solid waste management with pollution ending up in our waters, degrading our marine ecosystems. A recent modeling by Ocean Cleanup showed that 19 of our rivers, including Tuliahan, Agno, Davao, and Iloilo, are among the top plastic polluting rivers in the world, with the Pasig River being named as the most plastic polluting river in the world. Over 25% of the rivers worldwide that are responsible for 80% of ocean plastic pollution can be found in the Philippines. Our throwaway consumptive wasteful culture are directly threatening marine life with fish, seabirds, sea turtles, marine mammals getting entangled in or even ingesting plastics. The problem is to how to solve this and it's set to worsen because in 2017 we found that we produce as much plastic in the past 13 years more than we did in the previous half century. And at that rate, we will end up with more plastic than fish in the oceans by 2050. Oceans so acidic that farmed fish yield could be reduced by, believe it or not, 90%. Aside from this, because over 99% of plastic is made from chemicals sourced from fossil fuels. This plastic addiction contributes to global warming and climate change. 
every step of plastics life cycle from extracting and transporting materials to refining and manufacturing the product and even to disposal causes greenhouse gas emissions which threatens our ability to keep global temperatures rise below our 1.5 degrees celsius goal at current trends emissions from plastic could reach up to 1.34 gigatons per year and over 56 gigatons by 2050 which is why i am pleased to share that the house of representatives recently approved on third and final reading the single-use plastics regulation bill that aims to address the problem by stopping plastic waste from the source. It's one of the initiatives we're working on to protect our marine resources and the lives and livelihoods that depend on them, including strengthening convergence among government agencies, providing assistance to all the sectors working with the academic institutions as well, like UP for marine conservation, pushing for the passage and implementation of key measures like the Ecological Solid Waste Management Act of 2001 and the more recently enacted Expanded National Integrated Protected Areas System or INIPAS law, a strong oversight towards implementation of these already enacted laws. The Anti-Single-Use Plastics Act, when it becomes a law, will bring us to global standards since over 127 countries have regulations on plastic. It will be one of the key, it will be an important element to our transition to our circular economy. The bill which we approved will phase out single-use plastics by tiers, starting with the most problematic types, plastic straws, stirrers, candy, balloon, and cotton bud sticks, buntings, confetti, Packaging below 10 microns thick will be phased out within one year. Second group or tier of plastic plates and saucers, cups, bowls, and lids, cutlery, um, food and beverage containers, um, oxo degradable plastics, multi layered sachets and pouches, film wrap packaging, bags below 50 microns will be phased out within four years. We also know that a ban or a phase out will not be enough. It's just one part of the entire spectrum of solutions that we need to address to eventually solve this problem of single use plastic. We also made sure that the bill includes provisions to institute extended producers responsibility, which will hold producers responsible for collecting and recycling the amount of plastic they produce and introduce into the market, as well as improving waste management, even incentivizing our consumers, our retailers, traders, manufacturers, and really generating awareness, raising awareness, and exploring so many eco alternatives. I know you are particularly interested in this because of your concerns regarding sustainable packaging materials for food products, especially fishery products. Moving forward, while we wait for the Senate to finally pass their version of the bill, we should be working to develop more sustainable alternatives. In fact, I understand their government agencies are bringing together industry advocates and stakeholders in this direction. A day after the bill was approved in the House, the Department of Science and Technology, Climate Change Commission, the Department of Finance even, and the Department of Environment held a joint conference to present research and development initiatives on alternatives to single-use plastics like starch-based plastic and uh, Cheeto Sun packaging, green degradable polymers from plant-based oils. I hope that beyond helping raise awareness on such alternatives. You can also help pioneer research, exploring more environment-friendly packaging, especially for the fisheries sector. In closing, let me affirm a truth that I know 
we all share and live by. The survival and prospering of human life depends on the survival and the prospering of our marine life. It is this insight that threads together your discussions today on government initiatives to accelerate the uptake of a circular economy and a sustainable consumption and production, as well as seafood safety, especially during this pandemic. And I hope it is also what will power the work that you do moving forward. Our lives are indelibly linked to the ocean, inextricably linked to its resources. We must act now with urgency and resolve to ensure the ocean's protection for our fisher folks, for all the sectors that depend on it, but not just for them, for all Filipinos now and in the future. Thank you very much. Duro, duro, git salamat. Thank you. Good morning.